Hello crafters and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Deepa Robbins from Designs by D and I have another Make the Cards Challenge post for you. So this one is actually a theme challenge and it's pretty simple, it's just Christmas. So go ahead and link up all of your Christmas cards. We'd love to see what everyone's created. For you today, I have some inspiration and I have really gotten into these soft colors and these soft, elegant looking Christmas cards. So I'm gonna continue with that today and to change it up a bit, I created a double fold card and one of the flaps, so one of the folds was made with acetate. Now I've seen a lot of products, products or projects made with acetate lately and I am just in awe. It just adds to the shine and I think the results are beautiful. So here's the challenge post. Go ahead and head on over to www.makethecardschallenge.com and check out the inspiration from all of the designers. Get inspired, make your cards, and link them all up. You could be the winner for the week. So let's go ahead and get started with this card. I'm going to be using the Pink Fresh Studio Chevron foil plate, and I'm going to be foiling it on two pieces of cardstock. So I'm gonna do it on white and like a pale pink recollections cardstock. And the reason why I do this is it creates a bit of options. Like it gives me some options when I'm actually putting the card together. I have a vision of what I wanna do, but I don't really know how it's gonna turn out until I start to put all the little pieces together. So I like to also foil on a white piece of cardstock. And this just, like I said, it just makes it easier for me to switch things out if I change my mind. Now, when I'm foiling larger plates like this, I like to use the Spellbinders Quick Trimmer. It's just nicer because when you have larger pieces of foil, I find that it's harder to cut it up. Not to mention, you can sometimes ruin the foil as you're cutting it. So this just helps you keep your foil in good condition and also use exactly what you need. So you're not gonna get over foiling and you're also saving your foil so that you can use the extra pieces for other, um, other projects. Now there's two ways to stick your plate onto your paper with the foil in between and this is one way. I kind of just place everything where I think it should go and then add my tape afterwards. I'll show you another method after and I actually think that one's a little easier. It all depends what works for you. So now that I got this foil, be careful that plate is really hot which is why I'm using the tool. And you can see I got a pretty good foiling job here. You can see there's like some little areas where there's under foiling. And I think this is mainly because this is my first um, cardstock that I foiled for the day. So here's the second technique. Add your tape to the back of your panel, put your foil down, and then place down your plate. Once you've got your plate positioned exactly where you want it, then you just simply fold up those pieces of tape. And this really works well for me. Now this was the second cardstock that I folded and you can see that it foiled perfectly. And I would say that this is because the glimmer foil machine that I use by Spellbinders is fully heated up now. So just a quick tip with these large plates, I would recommend heating up your foil machine just a little bit longer before you do your first foiling. And that will prevent um, any under foiling for the most part. So I also went ahead and foiled the Spellbinders holiday florals plates. And this is, it's, four plates, one is a poinsettia, and then you get three pieces of foliage. And it actually doesn't take that long to do. I did it a few times. I did three poinsettias, and then I did two of the other elements and foiled all of those out with the silver foil again. Now, what I'm showing you here is my like box of scraps that I keep. I definitely recommend having one because anytime you're doing any smaller foiling, they do come in handy like this. I think I use some of the extra scraps for this, especially when you're foiling, say, larger frames, the whole center of that foil is not used. So this is the perfect thing to do to make sure that you're not wasting your foil. Now I'll quickly show you here that I basically cut all these little images out from my sidekick machine. Now I will note that I have been asked this question recently, but I use my sidekick for all the smaller die cuts. And then I also have a big shot plus that's on another table. It's just a little too time consuming to go back and forth between that table when I have small die cuts. So this sidekick comes in handy, but I do recommend having the, either the larger die cut machine or both of these to streamline your process. Now I'm going to be coloring these images in and I'll be using my Spectrum Noir Tri-Blends. Now these are beautiful. I love using these markers, especially when I'm just, I'm doing a lot of other different techniques and I don't want to think about which colors need to match with which. And they're great to use because you get three colors in one marker. So it's one color, three different shades, and I don't have to think about my dark, medium, and light shade. It's all there in one pen. 
So to keep this soft toned look, what I did was I used a little bit of the darkest shade and then I used more of the medium and the lightest shades to blend that out to just keep that soft pink color going on these poinsettias. Now you can see my method for this is to pop my die cuts back into the negative space and I do this because it just makes it easier to move the image around while I'm coloring it. it. This especially works well for smaller images. I don't think I really needed to do it here but like I said it just helps me like moving my image around say I want to color on this side and that side. I mean it all depends on the way you color and you can find a way that works best for you. Of course, the other option is to color these in ahead of time and then cut them out with the die cuts, but I just kind of like to do the foiling and the die cutting all in one go and then put that away. That way I don't have to worry about the products getting lost. So I did the leaves in the gray just to keep that soft tone going and to keep the colors a bit more consistent. And now I'm using the Pink Fresh Studio Happy Holiday Circle Frame Stamps and Dies. So I'm only going to be using the Happy Holiday Sentiment, um, the, the Sentiment Stamp and the Sentiment Die. So again, I went ahead and cut this out of some white cardstock about four times and then one time from Sizzix Opulent Glitter Silver cardstock. Um, I'll go over what the silver cardstock is for later, but for now, all I want to do is heat emboss one of those die cuts with the sentiment using some uh, Ranger Silver embossing powder. So this is another way to do it. If you're one of those people who has issues lining up your dies with the sentiments, go ahead and cut out that die cut first. Put it back in to the negative space, so keep that piece of cardstock, then line up your stamp and stamp everything out. And I find that this method actually works the best for me. This way, you don't have to worry about your die shifting as it goes through your die cutting machine and things like that. So I've stuck with this silver embossing powder because it goes with the rest of that silver theme that I have going. And once I've got that good and melted to the paper, then what I'll do is stack my pieces of cardstock. So this is where that silver cardstock comes in play. So I am really in the mode of stacking lately. Uh, I mentioned that a while ago I did the Pink Fresh Studios Create and Connect event and ever since then I've just been stacking all of my die cuts together to create dimension instead of using foam squares. The one big thing that I picked up from that event is that it is cheaper to actually stack your cardstock than it is to keep using all of that foam square uh, material. It costs a lot more and it you know it takes some time but I think these two methods kind of take the same amount of time, especially with smaller die cuts like this, where I'll be cutting that foam into tiny little sections. It just, it's its fun to stack them as well. Plus I have this, uh, this glitter card stock, which I'm kind of stacking in an offset manner to create a bit of a shadow here. So that I did the exact same process with the poinsettias and the bits of foliage. And you can see you get this nice little image with that bit of glitter sticking out of the edge, which just adds to the shine of this project. So let's go ahead and put this card base together. So I'm showing you, I cut out the actual card base out of card stock and I made it to fit my, um, my Chevron foiled panel. And it has like a one eighth of an inch border around it. So I didn't actually measure everything. I just made everything to fit that panel. Okay, so I cut that out of the white card stock. Then I'm using this white card stock base to kind of measure how big I need my acetate piece. And I'm gonna leave a quarter inch off the edge, off the right edge of that, and that's gonna be my flap to attach it to the white cardstock. So you can see here, I have that bit of that, that quarter inch edge sticking off the end, and that's basically my line. So what I'm gonna do is stick this in my trimmer here, and I'm gonna line up where that line would be at the end of the cardstock, and I'm going to create a score line with my bone folder. You can do this on your scoring panel, scoreboard, whatever you have. I just don't have one and I use my trimmer, so this is how I do it. Now, because we are using the acetate, it is a little harder to fold with your fingers. You will need a bone folder, or you could use, say, a ruler or something a little um, stronger to fold that. It all depends on how thick your acetate is. This is actually some um, good acetate that is actually heat resistant as well. You don't have to use heat resistant uh, acetate. And you can see that I added some strong double-sided adhesive to that 
flap on the acetate. I will now attach my front panel and leave that 1 8 of an inch border around the edge. So the reason why I leave the border is because I like my cards just a little bit bigger. <laughs> And don't add that acetate yet. I'm going to do my design on the inside of the card. So I'm using the Altenew Build a Flower Poinsettia for the main, for the sub sentiment there. And then the main sentiment, I'm using the Altenew Blessing stamp set. So for that main sentiment, I'll be using my Versifying Clara Nocturne ink to get a nice crisp image. And I find that these, I, I only need to stamp it once. If I'm using the Versafine, I have to stamp it twice. So that's basically my rule for that. Then I will use the Kitsch Flamingo Oxide ink to stamp out the Merry Christmas sentiment from the Poinsettia Build a Flower stamp set. Now I do want to mention that I've actually cut this off the actual stamp that comes with the set. There's actually like a little bit of an extra sentiment at the top. You, you could just mask it if you wanted to. Okay, so now the moment of truth. Let's line up that acetate, peel off the backing of the double-sided tape, and then simply fold that down and adhere it to the back of the white cardstock base. Now, I do use the bone folder to make sure that that is down there nice and good. And I recommend using the bone folder over your fingers because your fingers will leave smudges on the acetate. So now I'm basically arranging all of those little elements that I colored and die cut out beforehand on the front of my card and for the most part because I have stacked them I do kind of cut parts of them off like the end of that branch and things like that so that it's not sticking off the page too much and it's not kind of creating a bit of a gap between the die cut pieces. I find that the best way to do this is to use the ScorePal Strong Adhesive again. There's no drying time and your fingers are not going to get messy because it's not a liquid glue. Second of all, it's really strong. You're, you're taping this onto acetate. The likelihood of it coming off is high. So you do want to use something a little stronger like this. Now I also cut out some extra plain white die cuts for all of these. And you can see I'm adding it to the back of the acetate because I want to cover up all of that ugly looking uh, adhesive that you can see from the front of the card. So this is where those extra die cuts come in handy. I'm just going to cover up all of the little branches and then I'll cover up all of that with the the two bigger poinsettias which will create like a bigger uh, image that's completely plain white and it just makes it looks, look nicer and cleaner when your recipient is open, opening the inside of your card. Now to finish off the inside, of course, I used my extra die cuts and I put them on the bottom left corner of the inside of the card. This is what I usually do with all of my cards. And that's why I always like to kind of cut out a few extras, color in a few extras, stamp a few extras. They always come in handy like this. Now, finally, I will embellish the front. I'm using some Pink Fresh Studio Ballet Slipper Jewels along with some Crystal AB Lolly Beads. Those are the nail art gems that I use from Amazon. I have them linked in my blog, so go ahead and check those out. And you can see that the final product that you get looks just amazing. Those nail art gems shine so brightly, especially in the centers of those poinsettias. And that ballet slipper jewel just looks so nice and ties in the pink. On the inside, we've decorated it with the poinsettia from the front. So we have a continuous pattern from the front to the inside. And you can see that this makes just such a nice, elegant card. I 100% guarantee you that your recipients will just be like fawning over it. <laughs> So I hope that you were inspired to make something similar today. Maybe something, maybe the colors, maybe the foil, I don't know, maybe the products um, inspired you today. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you like my video. Uh, hit the notification bell to be notified of future videos and that's important when you do subscribe to my channel. And also go ahead and check out my blog. There's a whole bunch more inspiration up there. Don't forget to check out the Make the Cards Challenge post that I've also linked in my blog. And go ahead and check out the other designers material and link up your own projects. Like I said, you have the opportunity to be featured as the winner for this week's challenge. So I hope you all enjoyed my video today. And I hope to see you again next time. For now, I'll leave you with a playlist and another video for you to take a look at if you do feel inclined to do so. Thank you very much and have a great day.